one of the home favourites on the Buckinghamshire station. As we just wait for this race in the Championship Doubles to start, I've got a couple of results to bring you from the uh, Championship Fours, Championship Cutlass Fours with the Avril Velicott Cup. That was won by Molsey over there, over rivals Leander. A very extraordinary race. It won by three and a quarter lengths in a time of five minutes and one. After that, 3 4 2 was the Aspirational Quads for the Chairman's Trophy. That was won by the Dutch Composite of ASR Nerius and USR Triton against Bremer. Ruder Verein of Germany, won by one and three quarter lengths in a time of five minutes 20. In the other semi final of that aspirational quads, it was Molsey that had the best over the Bath and Minerva composite with a very solid row there, and one and three quarter lengths as well, a quick time of five minutes and 10. Then, just in those uh, single skulls that we saw go past in the aspirational singles for the Bernard Churcher Trophy, it was won by the Cardiff Sculler, Sienna Hayes against the Oxford Brooks, Beth Wilford Dustin. It was a very, very solid row from a solid, but it was a very competitive race, uh, but won by one and a third lengths in time of five minutes 52. And we just saw uh, Norwich's Samantha Redgrave have a very competent row of the American school scholar, Grace Spake. Had a great start, but just not enough in the afterburners. Lost by four lengths, time of six minute and two. And we wait for this championship double skulls for the WP Cup between Nottingham on the Berkshire side and Leander on the Buckinghamshire. That's two crews just start there. It's a really good start from both of them, but it's Nottingham that have edged out further against this very competent Leander crew. This is very interesting about Leander crew. Both of these guys come in with uh, American education here, Anna Porteous and Katie Maitland. Porteous, of course, graduated from the University of Washington and Maitland from Duke University of North Carolina. Lots of racing experience out there in the Varsity Crews. They'll be hoping to use that against this Nottingham crew who won a bronze medal at Ghent Regatta. So lots of experience coming into this uh, championship double skulls. So look at the drone footage overhead. Very competitive, just coming through to the booms here. Both a very high rating coming through here. Just wanting to make sure they can edge out, but they're sticking with each other. Lander crew just a little bit behind the Nottingham crew. Might even be just a canvas there. But this is going to be a very interesting race here, I think. Yeah, and uh, semi finals <clears throat> all the way through now till 2.15. And then the first of the finals starts at 20 past two. So as we watch this uh, race unfold, both the crews still keeping up a very high stroke rate. And uh, people yelling for their crews. The uh, chap below me sounds as if he's about to lose his voice. <laughs> yelling on the crew from Nottingham and some cheers for Leander. Leander having a bit of a push now as they pass our commentary position and it's Nottingham that cross us 
by all of two centimeters, I reckon. I think, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. You couldn't, couldn't even fit a finger in between those two, I don't think. But yeah, it's very interesting to see that very high rated start. It's quite a risky strategy with some crews. But it looks like the Leander, they're both lengthened out now. The Leander one have really started to push through now. It was a blinding start for both crews and they are still, still very close. But we'll see how this race pans out as they lengthen out and rhythm and start to put the power down. Well, they're racing for a place in the final. So the race plan will be there, but it's very much about you beating the other crew. And Nottingham, who have led this race, now just been overtaken by Leander. Leander seem to have just a smoother rhythm there. They're pushing those puddles away. And with every stroke, they're gaining more and more ground on the now chasing Nottingham double skull. Down at the start, the next semi-final underway, Headington School. And it's Edinburgh University and University of London composite. Absolutely. Yeah, this is a very good start from both crews here. Just going to get the top of the picture of well, Leander have just taken half a length now as they move out to the middle of the court. They're moving out into the middle of the course, just coming to the end of the regatta enclosure. Really just sort of look to be placing their caches a lot better in here, making sure they give themselves the best platform on which to launch themselves for the next stroke and set themselves up. But yeah, as we just see, we have a semi-final here, just coming up just past Temple Meadows. Just having a look at the University of London, the University of... Uh, Edinburgh University and the University of London crew here looking very strong. They're really sending those puddles away at the start. They've settled into the rhythm quite quickly, but they're setting themselves up very nicely. And the boat's sitting beautifully in the water there. They're just knocking it along. There's no real bounce to it. And putting down some really decent strokes, sending those puddles away and moving clear as they head across the relative calm of the Copas Meadows, the green car parking area, and then they hit a wall of noise, which is the enclosures, which are absolutely packed. I've just been down there. And, uh, yeah, it's a brilliant, brilliant party atmosphere. Gorgeous weather. Um, and there is an awful lot of people here. There's still room, though. Absolutely. You want to come down and have a look? It's fantastic. I mean, it's something, especially yesterday, it seems to go on throughout the whole day as well, even towards the last race that we saw, but Lee and Nottingham yesterday, it's just kept going. And it really helps these rowers as well. I mean, we've seen some really strong performances in the middle third as they've come past. A lot of crews really lengthening out. And speaking of lengthening out, just having a look at this uh, Edinburgh London composite here uh, as well. This is a very, very experienced crew. They've won gold in the women's quads at the Under-23 World Championship 2017. We've got Hodgkins Burnham here, won silver in the women's eights at the Under-23 Worlds in 2016, and also a bronze in the Women's Quads at the World Championships. So there's a lot of pedigree in this crew, and you can clearly see as their rhythm is very settled, but a lot of power in here showing real efficiency. I think. And Tom is just leaping up in the air because um, <coughs> apparently there's a Football World Cup going on, and England have just scored. Oh, that's very good news. <laughs> so he's, he's, he's delighted. Um, <coughs> we started sure. playing three lines, yeah? Or <laughs> he's, uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's dancing around. And we're watching these, uh, these crews head down towards the finish, and that's a really, really good, strong semi-final there from the composite. Up at the start, it's the academic clubs, Cotsless Fours, Mortlake Anglian Alpha, Vesta Rowing Club. Uh, this, well, that's a very good start there from the Mortlake crew. From the Mortlake crew, but very nice neck and neck with the Vesta crew here. This is going to be a tight race. Very quick out of the start, both settling into the rhythm now. Just as they come out of Temple Island, and that's a very nice clean rowing from Vesta. Mortlake staying with them, just keeping the rate a little bit high, just trying to make sure that they can maintain that good start and the pace that they picked up from it. So it's Mortlake on the Berkshire Station. On the right there, as you're looking, and Vesta to the left, Vesta at the top of the island, had a lead of about half a length.
Both these London Tideway clubs will be very familiar with each other. Yes, I'm sure they'll be loving the water as well here. Bit of a luxury compared to, <laughs> compared to the Tideway at times. Yeah, there's a <coughs> few more bobbles on the water than there was yesterday. I think there's probably, I don't know, maybe there's certainly a bit more river traffic. Um, some of the guys driving the boats are totally oblivious to the fact that there's rowers. I yeah, that, I, th that, I think that fellow's lost his speedboat, the one that's just gone past. Could probably uh, surf on a couple of those yeah. waves, I think. <laughs> but it's one of those, another one of those things for these, uh, these are coxless, these are coxless fours that we're looking at here. So the whoever's steering, they have to be aware of this, because it can make those minor adjustments to their course, which can be so vital that it can eat up to a lead or even take away from the lead that they've cut up as well. Well, both these crews steering a my own perfect course, Vesta, with a lead as they pass us by just about a length. So we're just seeing the end as well in the top of your picture, the end of that uh, championship du championship doubles race between Headington and Edinburgh. Edinburgh Uni London composite full of experience there, look like they set that. But coming back to this race as well, it's best that it have lengthened out. They're almost trying to take some clear water here with a high rate and very strong, really attacking those catches as well to make sure they get, get more power into the boats as fast as possible to stop any Mortlake uh, comeback at these early stages. And plenty of noise, plenty of support as they're going through the enclosures. Now, as we said earlier, it's really great to see all these people out on the course there on this gorgeous day for Sunday at Henley Women's Regatta. See a very long reach air from Vesta, trying to reach out for that catch and making as much water as possible so that they can continue to lengthen that lead. Well, in that last shot, it looked like Mortlake were getting very, very close to the I think they have as well looking up the course as well they've had to booms yeah stops. oh no it looked like they were getting very close and I think they've collided and had to restart down at the start we have the well, the semi-final Lee Rowing Club A and Thames Lee Rowing Club Barch Station Thames on the Buck Station both of these hammering their way down the back of Temple Island and then that sort of natural barrier when you break cover. Umpire warning Lee to get back onto their station. So uh, certainly a lot of splashing in the middle there, whether their blades are touching. If not, they're pretty, pretty close. Lee moving across. Thames staying straight. Yeah. And another, just it's amazing, isn't it? That real battle at the start, just to try and get your nose in front. It really is. I think it's also a battle for the water as well. It really, really is amazing how different it is the water is from on either side as well in terms of the flow. And again, I think Lee Rowing Club will be used as a as a member myself. I mean, I'm aware of how difficult it would be to negotiate the, the river down there with the barges. So I think they'll be pretty. They'll have been pretty comfortable in that situation. It looks like they're settling into a very strong rhythm now, lifting that boat out of the water. It looks to me like the Lee have moved across mm. and now they're moving back and I think that zigzag has probably allowed Thames to maybe gain a seat if not two but it's Lee that continue to lead as they come up to us and just pass underneath our commentary position it is the Lee that have a lead can hear some hear some cheers on the on the banks here, and yeah, this lead that we could see, just holding that lead by about three, half a length. It's about half a length, yeah. Yeah, about three, just holding out long and strong, finding the catch, and just slotting it in to make sure they can push on. But Tem staying with them though. This is going to be a really important psychological battle, I think, for Lee. They're going to want they're going to want to sure they keep the keep Thames pushing. Whilst they can't see them, they'll want to keep them and push them away. This the second semi final. As we look at the top of the screen, we see Vesta cross the line. So the winners of this go forward to the final this afternoon. And it will be Vesta that they meet. And at the moment, this is still very much in the balance, I think, actually. I mean, Lee are ahead. But they are holding on to their, they are holding on to a rhythm. Tem staying with them though. 
So we'll see how this one pans out. As, as we say, it's going to be a very interesting final, I think, with Leicester. Obviously, the crash coming from Mortlake there gives you, it gives you a very interest in terms of sort of rest. It gives you that debate on sort of who's going to have more sort of rest and time. That's just about where Mortlake had their collision with the, the boom. Lee have negotiated that gap successfully and now have clear water. So just over a length lead as they're leaving the regatta enclosures. Racing every five minutes. Next up on the start, it's the aspirational academic eights. Two Brooks crews in these semis. Brooks A, Oxford Brooks University A in the first semi-final against Bath University, Bristol University Composite. And the second semi-final sees Newcastle University against Oxford Brooks University B. So that will be two cracking eights races coming up. Just seeing the images there of the um, just um, Lee Rowing Club just trying to see out this aspirational club, Cox's Fours, against Thames Rowing Club. And they've really settled into a rhythm here. Thames is staying with them, but Lee have used that middle third to really extend their lead. Keeping that strong and long rhythm. And we'll just leave that picture in the top right, bottom left here. That's uh, this is the aspirational academic eight. So it's just started Oxford Brooks University A, as you can see on the near side. And you've got a composite.